and welcome to the sixth episode of the Charcoal Selfie series. In today's class, I'm going to be breaking down the steps of how to draw an eye. And I feel like this is something that students have been attempting to draw on their own for a very long time. In fact, most of you have probably already tried to draw an eye before. And that can be kind of tricky when you have in your mind how you're supposed to try to draw one when I'm teaching you very different steps of how to draw one. So I want you to be paying really close attention to whether or not you're actually following along with the steps because it's very common for your mind to say hey we already know how to draw this we don't have to actually pay attention to these steps so make sure that you're following along very closely and that you are pausing when it says to pause and actually attempting those steps before continuing on and trying to watch the whole episode at once so we are going to be attempting to make it look like this example and uh, just a couple of things to notice is that there are quite a few bright sections and it seems as though we don't have a whole lot of the gray from the paper showing through but we do actually have quite a large portion it's just like in the fine details where you'll see that gray from the paper so we're gonna just go through and I'll break down the steps of how to complete this eye and I hope that it is helpful so let's go ahead and get started just like always, we're going to begin this skill building activity by using either a very sharp pencil or a mechanical pencil to go through and transfer all of our details as accurately as possible. Now, when we're working on the eye, it's especially important that we are actually transferring the details that we see present in that photo rather than just giving ourselves general ideas. Oftentimes for the eyebrow, it's a big mistake that students make to try to just do the outline, but with this eyebrow specifically, we need to go through and transfer each hair if possible. And I know that seems like an overwhelming task because there are obviously so many individual little hairs, but it is really important that we give ourselves the length of each hair and the direction of each hair the best that we can. We also want to do a good job giving ourselves the width of each line. So for example, when we're adding in this crease behind the eyelid, we want to show where it's narrow and also where it starts to widen rather than just drawing one individual line. We also want to trace the outside edge of the eyelash rather than just the little lines that you see from the lashes themselves. So essentially we're creating almost like tiny little triangles for this space and it's a big misconception that you should just be adding individual little lines. Don't forget to add all of the little value changes that you see in the iris as well, because we want as many little indicators as possible of where our values need to change. Make sure with the bottom lashes that you're really transferring as much detail as possible. Every single little line that you see, you need to transfer onto your paper. As you finish up your transfer, you're going to just continuously lift your paper and compare it to the details that you see in the photo to make sure that you have transferred everything that you possibly can. And this is what your transfer should look like. Our next step, just like always, is to find our brightest sections of white and go through with our white charcoal pencil to fill them in. The top edge of this box was really bright and then I slowly started transitioning to get a little bit lighter as it went down. I also chose to add some of this light value behind the eyebrow because I could see in the photo that some of that skin tone was showing through. I also went underneath the eyebrow just in the arch and tried to add in that brighter white highlight with my pencil as well. I also added white to the little highlight. I added small circular values of white to the iris and I also began filling in the bottom of the eye with white, making sure that I was fading as I got higher up to represent that shadow that's 
up against the eyelid. So notice that as we get farther up and closer to the eyelid, it's actually more of a gray tone, which is a very common misconception, and students always try to fill in the entire eye solid white, but it does actually fade in value and gets darker up against the eyelid. Then I added the highlight that's on the center part of that tear line, making sure I didn't go too far to the right, which is where there's a shadow. Next, I added in just a small, subtle highlight that was up against the edge of the right side of the eye and moved on to adding some of the brighter highlights that I saw in the tear duct. From there, that brighter highlight just wraps itself all the way around underneath the eye, but notice that there is a subtly darker section that's just directly underneath the tear line, so we want to make sure that we don't fill that section in too much. And this is what your eye should look like before you start blending. The next step, like always, is to come through with your Q-tip and work on blending those values out so that it's a nice smooth transition into the gray tone of the paper. Now, when you're working on this step, make sure that you are continuously looking back and forth between your reference photo and what you're creating on your drawing. It's very easy to get carried away, especially since there are a lot of white values in this image. So what you should be avoiding is filling this entire eye in with white. We wanna have nice smooth transitions out to the gray so that when we go in with our black, we still have that gray that's separating from the white and the black pencil so they aren't mixing. So just double check and compare with your reference photo to make sure that you are matching it as best as you can. And this is what your eye should look like once you have completed the blending step. The next portion of this drawing is working with our black charcoal pencil. And while we're working on the eye specifically, it's very important to try our best to keep our black pencil as sharp as possible, especially because we're beginning by adding individual hairs for this eyebrow and we're just slowly building up those layers. So we're going to just continuously try to focus on the lines that we actually see and continue to look back and forth between our reference photo to make sure that the direction of the lines match and the length of the lines match. Remember that during this step, we're only adding the black charcoal pencil to our darkest values, and that includes the crease that's behind the eyelid. And we really wanna pay attention to the width indicators that we gave ourselves while we were transferring to notice that the section that's on the side by the tear duct is wider and the section that's by the corner of the eye is wider compared to the thinner line that's right above the iris. We're also going to go through and start filling in just the solid section of black that's going to be what we use to help us fill in the values for the eyelashes. We're also going to add in that dark shadow that's cast by the eyelid onto the iris. And we're going to fill in the solid section of black that goes all the way up against the edge of our little highlight that we added. So we're outlining that outside edge of the iris, we're adding those shadows, and starting to build up the layers that we need to blend the iris. Before continuing on to filling in the rest of the sections of our eyelashes. Next, I filled in the iris, and that was one of the last solid sections of black minus the eyelash lines, so I was able to switch to working with my blending stump to fill in some of those medium tones, like the space that you see behind the eyebrow lines. It was just a little bit darker, so I went through with my blending stump and smoothed it out. I continued working with my blending stump to help create some of those medium tones, and I was working on the crease of the eyelid that was closer to the tear duct, so I was just bringing some of those medium tones out along that line while also bringing it up towards the eyebrow. Then I did the same thing on the other side and worked to build up those medium tones along that line of the crease and then slowly brought those tones out so that you could see that eyelid was sort of rounded in that section. 
I realized that there was a bit of a white highlight in the center of the eyelid that I had forgotten, so I went through and added in just a little bit more white along the eyelid itself and blended it out with my Q-tip to help that eyelid look a little bit rounded too. And I used my blending stump to bring in some values just super lightly up against those white highlights to make it have a nice smooth transition. I also added in some of those medium tone values up against the tear duct and started working on bringing in those shadows that we were talking about at the beginning that are just underneath the eyelid in the white of the eye. Next, I chose to start working on shading in the iris. So I began by smoothing out that outer ring that's much darker and built up some of those darker values up against the edge of the eyelid. Then I added some of the medium tone that was directly around the pupil. Make sure to notice that the texture of the iris is very rough and kind of grainy, so it's all right to leave some lines that are not perfectly blended. I went through and started building up the layers in some of the areas that were a bit darker than what I had originally drawn them in as, like at the top right section of my iris. And then I just continued all the way around, really focusing on paying attention to the reference photo and where the darker values were compared to where I needed to leave it lighter to represent highlights. I noticed that there was a really highlighted section just at the bottom of the iris, so I was really trying to make some contrast between the top and the bottom. And this is what your iris should look like. Next, I went through with my blending stump and really worked to build in some of the values that I saw, especially in the whites of the eye, like where there's a bit of a shadow from the eyelashes along that tear duct, there's a little bit of a shadow. And I was just working on building up those layers of medium tones, especially in the corner of that tear duct where there was a little bit of a shadow and along the top right side of the eyelid where it's quite a bit darker. I went through and added in some decent medium tones through there as well. I also noticed some lighter tones that I needed to fill in near the tear duct and then along the bottom of the eye. We want to make sure that all of our skin tones are as perfect as we can get them before the next step of adding in the thin lines of the eyelashes over the top. Now you probably noticed that a lot of our pencil lines that we had transferred are gone now because we've gone over them with the charcoal. So we need to go back through and just reapply those lines with our transfer with our mechanical pencil to make sure that we can see exactly where those lines are for drawing them in. Once you have your lines transferred again, you need to make sure that your black charcoal pencil is as sharp as it can be or that you can rotate it and find a sharp edge because these lines are very fine and need to have sharp, crisp edges. It is very common at this point for students to recognize that there are a lot of eyelashes and to go through and just start filling in lines. But that is not what we're doing here. We need to make sure that we are transferring only the lines that we see in our reference photo and that we have visible in front of us from our pencil transfer. So a lot of these lines are not just thin little lines like what you see in drawings that students make where they have like spider leg eyelashes. These eyelashes actually come out at different angles. So you'll notice that they're going in different directions and that quite a few of them have a varying thickness. So some of them are very thin and some look almost like thicker triangles, like elongated triangles. And so we're working our absolute hardest to transfer these in the exact way that we see, both in our transfer and on our reference photo. The final step after adding in your eyelashes and making sure that they match your photo as much as possible is to go back through and find some other little details that you might need to go back and re-add. Remember that sometimes when you're working with charcoal, it can disappear, especially from some of those darker areas or brighter areas, just because when you are working with your blending stump or Q-tip, you do kind of smear those values away to help 
blend them into other areas. So going back and reinforcing some of those areas that might have gotten smeared, adding any little details, or correcting any imperfections that you might notice when looking back and forth from your reference photo to your final drawing. And when you're finished, this is what your eye should look like. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. I hope it was helpful to see the steps of this eye broken down, and I am looking forward to our next and final skill building practice together in our next episode. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.